Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome back to my channel. This is the Hustle and Soul Review, Season 3, Episode 7. Uh, he's married. Um, yes, this episode was a little bit juicy. I gotta give it to you. Um, but before we get into it, please, first, if you have not done so already, subscribe to my channel. And also make sure that you hit the notifications button so you will be notified whenever I upload my latest content. So let's get right into it. So, um, the episode starts off there at lunch. lunch shit <laughs> they are at lunch shift at the restaurant and it's Cola's first day as the new manager there and um Drinker walks her ass in as if nothing happened the night before now you remember from the last episode as it ended Drinker was pissed off because they had a little competition where they had to make the little cocktails or whatever right um if it looks like I'm looking off to the side it's this damn camera I hate I'm gonna get it together though when I get my anyways we're gonna be there anyways though so um like I said Drinker still pissed off because you know from the night before they had to do that little um cocktail you know thing that contest whatever and that's when lp announced that um cole is going to be the new um bar manager or whatever right so that's when drinker gets pissed off she throws a drink at both um lp and cola and she storms out of there says she quits well it's the next day and um homegirl just walk her ass up in there like ain't a goddamn thing happened like she just walks on in strolls on past um the twins hey 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 how you doing just walk right on in and call everybody Everybody's just like, oh, damn, like, what the, what the fuck? Let's see what's gonna happen. <laughs> so, um, Drinker walks in, again, like I said, like, ain't a goddamn thing happened. And so, she even says in her green screen that she admits that what she did was wrong uh, for her overreacting and for her throwing the drink, which is very mature for her to realize that. And so, she pulls Ann and LP to the side. And so, she says, first of all, I want to apologize to you, Anna. And LP kind of said, like, what the fuck you mean you want to apologize to Anna? You threw the drink on me you know if that was my five thousand dollar coat you threw that shit on me god damn it so she apologizes uh to anna whatever for getting out of line and for throwing the drink and then she does apologize to lp right so lp is basically like look here this is what we're gonna do i'm gonna give you my um dry cleaner bill and then you need to get your ass to work like what the fuck that's what we doing here you know what they need over there these niggas need a human resources department over there that's the motherfucking problem lp you need human resources over there because you know what <laughs> these bitches running wild through here goddamn it you need to get some goddamn stabilization on these hoes because you letting these bitches do what the fuck they want to do they clapping their ass while they serving chicken they pulling um lace fronts off they they fighting and tipping over shit in the goddamn creek that's out in the back supposed to be part of your motherfucking ambiance and you still letting these hoes stay there you need a human resources department because bitches just need to be accountable for shit i'm sorry they do that's what i'm, I'm just telling you what'll be good for the business i'm just saying so um drinker comes in and she still got a little attitude about it which basically i mean lp didn't give her no kind of disciplinary action for it but just giving this bitch the goddamn his dry cleaner bill for his five thousand or whatever thousand dollar goddamn jacket no you need to put this bitch on restriction god damn it you need to you need to discipline this bitch. This bitch did wrong. Ain't need to do this whole like a puppy or something. Something. You need to get get these round these hoes up. Cause they doing what the fuck they want to do, LP. And they bring in now your property value. They bring in down your property value. I'm just fucking saying. So she's go behind the counter, whatever, where Cola is. And Cola dressed up, you know what I'm saying, for her, you know, first day or whatever. She trying to look like all business like you know, she trying to bring the whole them in a little bit and bring out the professional side of her and sometimes you got to pull that hoe in you got to bring out the professional side of you and that's what she's doing right here so she got a little outfit on or whatever little business shit still got a goddamn titties out but um she oh my hold on one second okay we're back sorry about that so What's best for the business? Anyways, Drink is there. She still got her little attitude. She come around the counter. And so she tells Cola, like, um, Cola tells her basically, okay, I need you to finish um, 
chopping up the rest of this fruit or whatever. So Drake was like, okay, I thought she was going to finish it since she was here first, but okay, I guess I got ahead and finish it. Bitch, don't have no attitude like that. Don't. Don't. But then again, LP, your bitch is running wild. Get you some goddamn human resources up and the goddamn motherfucking bitch is going to get gonna get you right after that so john john and eric they back at, at the, their place well now i don't think it's their place because from what cola was saying they have their own apartment in new york but they're at somebody's place in goddamn miami and it's a nice little place that they're at and they up on the balcony and they're discussing their relationship um but the, the threesome <laughs> that is him Eric and Cola and how John John is saying that he's still pretty much torn. He loves Cola. Cola has been down for him. Cola Cola has loved him through my, no matter what, which basically is saying Cola's loved you throughout you being gay and she been your beard this whole fucking time and you just can't let her go. But your boyfriend Eric gave you the ultimatum. Either you choose him or you choose her and you chose to stay with her. And so Eric, he really kind of don't give a fuck. He was like, look here, um, now that you chose me, we need, um, you need to go ahead and come out to your family and let your family know, you know, what's going on with me and you. And John John is telling him, look, I can't really come out to my family like that. You know, it's, it's not that easy for me because of the family and the background that I come from. They're going to judge me and I don't want to come out to them just yet. And especially not my father. This is what John John is telling him, especially not my father. He's telling him the last time, y'all, this dude said the last time he seen his dad was on Christmas. Christmas Day and they fist fought. Now, y'all, let me tell y'all from personal personal experience that is something that you will never forget. Let's just say that that is something you'll never forget, and it is it's something that leaves a hole in your heart for forever uh, that you'll never forget. But anyways, um, he's telling him that he's not able to come out to his father like that, is his family, and he has nobody. And so he's stressed out all the time. Like he, he, he doesn't know what he wants to do. He knows that he loves him and he knows he wants to be with him. But then again, at the same time, he still has feelings for, for Cola. And it's, it's, you need to figure out what you want to do, which what it is. I don't know what's all going on in John John life. I'm just an outsider looking in. What it looks like to me is that he's gay, but he just does not. I don't know if he doesn't want to accept it within himself that he is. And so he's saying because of that, he can't come out for whatever reason. The man is gay and he's struggling with it. And it's very obvious that he's struggling with it. And I feel bad for him. I feel so bad for him, for him. I can't imagine what that's 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 like and that's why a lot of people end up in his situation end up committing suicide because of that because they have these feelings and these emotions but they're torn between their family and what they feel is right and it's just it's sad it's sad for jojo i, I mean jojo for john john i feel bad for him but eric and him end up getting into it and um eric brings up the fact of of him drinking a lot and john john is like you damn right i drink a lot because i got a lot of shit going on i'm stressed out and you know if i want something to drink to help numb me from the pain that's what i do and like eric is telling him i get that you want to drink but you're doing it like excessively and john john started to get pissed off about it you know what i'm saying he got his little drink and uh eric is telling him like i think you need to put that drink now he's like nah motherfucker matter of fact and he turned that motherfucking bitch up like nigga what you gonna do about now to turn this bitch up and eric is looking like wow nigga that's what we do so, John John, of course, gets pissed off. He rips his little microphone up, and he walks on up out of there, and they he, he ends up leaving or whatever from the little scene. So, back at the restaurant, um, Anna and LP, and they cooking up or whatever. Anna's sitting up there telling, uh, which I would, too. She said, I'm going to be a, I'm gonna be on my uh, fucking 600-pound life next, goddammit, because the way your ass is cooking around here, I'm surprised she ain't fat. Because I know I'd be goddamn fat. If my man owned a soul food restaurant, I would have his goddamn ass cooking for me all the goddamn time. But then again, you got to have a membership, a gym membership, that goddamn shit. Because you're just going to be eating and eating and motherfucking eating but they back over there and they waiting on the goddamn twins with they fucking late ass and of course these niggas with they i like the twins but they so fucking they they did the, oh they hurt the shit out of me some goddamn time but they cool as fuck 
And of course, they blamed it on the motherfucking Uber driver. They blamed it on everybody, but they got themselves why they motherfucking late for goddamn work. LP says, if your ass is late one more goddamn time, I'm gonna lock your ass in the room with Nikki. And so they kind of start cracking jokes or whatever. Like it's, you know, basically like it's funny. Nikki like telling him, uh, hold on, uh, 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 uh. Don't get it twisted. Don't think just because I'm a big bitch that uh, I ain't got a type, I ain't got a standard, and trust and believe you niggas is not my goddamn type. So don't get it twisted. And LP kind of looking like, Oh, oh, really? Oh, yes, nigga, really. Nikki is beautiful. She is beautiful. And so for them to even try to crack jokes on the slot, some shit like that, Nikki like, uh-uh, you ain't my type. And twins, now one of y'all asses is my goddamn type. So don't get it twisted. She says her type is her little boyfriend, Jack. The one that look like a, um, instead of 50, he like 45 cent. That's her little thing that she says is, uh, ugh. Anyways. So, Cola um, thanks LP and Anna again. They're basically at the restaurant. She thanks Anna and LP again for the promotion. And so, she tells them, you know, I, I, I kind of want to step up from being the bar manager. And I want to be the floor manager now. You know what I'm saying? See if, if, if I can get that going or whatever. And LP tells, I mean, no, Anna tells her, I see the progress that you've been doing. And I appreciate everything that you've been doing for us and for the pink teacup. But I actually already have somebody in mind for the floor management position. I appreciate you, but I already got somebody in com I mean in 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 mind for that. And of course LP is like, um, who you got um in mind for that? To, for you know, and she's like, um, shut up, none of your business. But I've already got somebody in mind for that. But but thank you for your interest. But um I've got somebody in mind already. And of course, as soon as she says that, who comes walking through the door? Thandy. You knew she was gonna goddamn bring. We all knew she was gonna goddamn bring goddamn Fandy ass back. Anna got something up her sleeve though. Anna got something up her goddamn sleeve though. Anna. Yeah, girl. So as soon as um goddamn Fandy walk in, you could have swore LP ass see the motherfucking ghost. When I tell you that pitch black charcoal baby of his goddamn ass turned white as a fucking ghost when goddamn Fanny walked in, it's like the whole shift of the motherfucking room changed. The twins was even like, oh, shit, because, you know, Fanny fired their goddamn ass. She fired their ass over, like, the first episode. And she walks in, and they like, oh, shit. Like, what the fuck is going on? And so... Nikki and Anika are noticing, like, damn, like, what the fuck going on? LP over here sweating, and the twins is over here sweating, like, and Anna kind of, like, and homegirl kind of walking in, like, you know, she kind of on the play, like, what the fuck is going on? So Nikki, she just, like, she be like me. She, uh, well, let me get my motherfucking popcorn so I can, uh, sit back, see what the fuck is going on, goddamn it. And goddamn it, Nika's ass is like, man, you could have cut the motherfucking tension in that goddamn room. It was, it was crazy. It, it was goddamn crazy to only imagine what was going on in their goddamn mind when Thandie walked her ass up in that goddamn it. So, no sooner than she goddamn walk in there, goddamn when I tell you, fucking Lawrence ass turned into the ghost of, of Pink Teacup and this motherfucker disappeared. He disappeared about the dad was like, God damn, where this nigga go? <laughs> this nigga had to go run for his run, got to go goddamn duck and hide. Because the last time, again, Danny was trying to take his whole motherfucking head off his whole motherfucking body. So this nigga's in the back looking so goddamn distraught. And um Anna <laughs> I'm getting caught up in my goddamn notes. Anna tells his ass, um, like, look here, you know, we, we can talk about it, you know, this and the other. So Cole is trying to be, Cole is trying to lighten up the situation. Cole is like, look here, let's just take some shots so we can kind of calm down and everybody can collect themselves. And LP is like, I don't want no goddamn shots, man. When I tell you, Anna's ass is like, look, you're going to take the motherfucking shot right now. Take the shot and you're going to shut the fuck up and you're going to take that motherfucking shot. When I tell you this goddamn motherfucking Lawrence is like, <sighs> nigga, how the fuck you gonna take an angry shot? Who the fuck does that? That nigga was mad. He took that goddamn shot though. But how the fuck you gonna take an angry shot? You mad at the shot? Nigga, the shot didn't do shit to you. Fuck you, goddammit. With <laughs> your goddamn stupid ass. Who the fuck does that? So, 
LP pulls Anna to the side and he's like, what the fuck are you doing? Why would you even bring Fandy back of all people? Knowing good and damn well what y'all past is, what our past is, why would you even bring her into the situation? And it's like, look here, when it comes down to it in this business, you need people you can trust. You need people who already know the business. You need the people that already know our business, how it goes. She's part of the family, so why not bring her up here? She's not going to be at the Brooklyn's Pink Tea Cup because that's going through whatever the fuck it's going through right now. So why not bring her up here and um, let her be a part of this right here? And he's like, well, you didn't tell me any of this that, that was going down. She's like, look, just trust me. Just trust me, Lawrence. It'll work out. But knowing that motherfucking bitch, Anna, oh, that bitch goddamn Anna got something up her goddamn sleeve. Trust and goddamn believe. That bitch got something up her motherfucking sleeve. So Cole and Nikki go out to a bar. They having some goddamn drinks or whatever. And, um... Cola tells Nikki that, um, you know, look here, I've been on um, social media or whatever. Long story short, she ends up finding out um, her dude, Jack, who the dude that Nikki is with, that she's been in a relationship with or whatever, that he has a whole Instagram page with him and his wife on it. Now, um, Nikki didn't know anything about this because apparently the Instagram page that she sees, he's all single doing his goddamn thing. Now, y'all, this motherfucker got two different goddamn accounts. One that is set up where he's fucking single. He living his best goddamn single life. And the other, where this nigga has his wife on there saying that she's his love and his life and end all. This, all this bullshit. Like, what? Niggas wonder why they do shit like this to females and then they wake up dead. You wake up, you fucking waking up dead because you done did some dumb shit. Not saying that you deserve to die, but what I'm saying is don't do shit like this to feed. If you got a whole other situation going on, you need to open your fucking mouth and you need to fucking say something. Don't sit up and, and do this girl like this. Don't, girl, I'm getting ahead of myself. So any goddamn way, Nikki is pissed. Which I would be goddamn pissed too. So she's trying to collect it and keep it together. But girl, when I tell you she was so motherfucking mad, she's like, I'm gonna kill her! I'm gonna kill her! Listen, when a bitch clips and when she snapped and said, that's that's a crazy woman, Tourette's right there. When she cool, calm, and she's like, I'm That means run. Nigga, you got, you got a head start, nigga, run. Because you're fucked up. And if you don't know you fucked up, Bruh, bruh, I feel bad for you. So the twins are back at the house or whatever, and they barbecuing. And uh, Cola shows up, and she's showing off her new little old hairdo, her little short haircut or whatever that she got. And y'all might be mad wrong for it. It was, yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, it was cute or whatever. The thing about it, it was a little bit too thin for me, and then it looked like it was, it was, it was, she looked like she had got caught out in a, in a humid day. And you know how your curls have been popping when you first leave the house? Because that's how it is when I, you know, your curls be popping, you're like, ew, I'm feeling myself. And then the humidity, humidity, that's the humidity, hits it, and your shit just kind of, mm, just does what the fuck it wants to do. That's what her hair was looking like in the front. It was all right, but it really wasn't working for me. It just really wasn't working for me. But the twins were feeling whatever, you know what I'm saying? And it was cute, whatever. So she said John John's been hitting her up, but she's been ignoring his ass because she does not want to communicate back with him. She does not want to fall into the same bullshit that she fell into with him in the first place, which is good, Cola. You need to move the fuck on because, girl... You dodged the bullet with that one. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Then they start to talk about how Fandy is, has came back to the motherfucking restaurant. And Cola was saying, just when they was getting on point as, you know, trying to build themselves up as a team at the restaurant, then comes in Fandy, which this bitch done threw a whole nother motherfucking loop in the goddamn scene. Like, <sighs> some shit about to go down with that. Hmm. So, um, later on, okay, yes, 
later on that night, they are having a party, and um, the twins got their little friend there, and Cola checking out their little friend that they got there. He was a little cute, little tenderoni, you know, he was cute or whatever. And so she was over there dancing on him, and like she said, you know, my way to get over John John is to get unto another man. Um, hello, whatever the fuck his name is, by John John. Like, and it was just weird. She was trying to dance on him too hard. It's like she was, she was trying to put the, she was trying to put that thing on him, but it wasn't a natural for her trying to, you know, try to put that thing on him. The wine and the twerk was forced to me. It just wasn't really natural. Was it working for me? Like her whole twerk was like, if you really get into it, like you get it, you know what I'm saying? But hers was like, she was just, she was just, she was trying too hard with it, and it just, it wasn't really working for me. So I just, I just didn't, you know, I didn't get the whole thing. But uh, she was trying to put it on him. I get that. Anyways, so um, yeah. Back at the pink teacup, Dandy approaches LP. He's in there in his little, um, you know, his lair or whatever, cooking things up. And so she walks up to him and she's like, hey. Hi, what's going on? Like, nigga, you ain't spoke to me. You ain't say hi. You ain't say hello. You ain't say fuck your bitch, kiss my ass. Like, picking up, check them out. You ain't saying nothing. Like, what, what the fuck going on? And so he's like, um, what do you, we, I feel like you're coming back. He's like, he like snaps. He, he tripped. Like, this was one of those, oh, oh, uh, uh, you got me fucked up. No, you're not going to do that. He tells her, I feel like you're back to ruin what I got going on. You're here to ruin my life. I told you that I have a whole family. I'm in love with Anna and that I'm trying to be with her. Why are you here? Why are you in my personal space? Why are you trying to ruin what I got going on? Why can't you get that through your head that I don't want to be with you no more? I want to be with Anna. Which, hold on, hold on, hold on. She tells him... Anna brought me here, and it's not my fault that Anna didn't tell you that she brought me here. That's between you and fucking Anna. And so for you to even fucking think that I'm coming back, like trying to fuck up whatever you got going on, which, Dandy, bitch, you are head over motherfucking hills for his ass. We all know that, yes, you hopped on the opportunity to come there and to be back in that got in the presence of his ass you hopped on that very goddamn opportunity and every motherfucking body knows that but he just kind of he goes off on her he goes off and like what can't you get it through your mind and i don't want to be with you and da -da -da. she gets pissed off and just like kind of walks off from that was one of them moments right there i was surprised that she didn't get a nigga two piece in a biscuit right there like that's one of them moments that's one of them crazy dandy moments you had every right to just boom just like steal on his ass right then in there because he deserved that in that moment from her because what the fuck he was trying to do it was fucked up what he was trying to do you ain't shit Lawrence fuck out of here fuck out of here girl when I tell y'all Nikki and Cola got down finna get into it over some motherfucking spinach Child, I don't blame her goddamn ass though. But any goddamn way, Nikki like um, she pulled a Tanisha Thomas on her ass. She like, who the fuck ate my motherfucking spinach? Who the fuck ate that? She finna go off on a goddamn twin. Twins like, I I ain't shit to do with that. Next thing you know, here come Cola coming around and like a newborn baby ostrich with her new goddamn haircut eating a motherfucking salad, right? So Nikki like, then she knocked the whole salad out of her head. Now let me tell you something. When you got that salad made just right, when you got that thing made just right, when you got it with the lettuce, that good, good fresh lettuce, and the boiled egg, and the cheese, and the ranch dressing, and the motherfucking chopped meat up on there, and fucking black olives, and cucumbers, and carrots, and croutons, and bacon bits, bitch, I'm gonna take your whole motherfucking head off your goddamn body if you knock that salad out my goddamn hands. You think I won't fight you? Bitch, I will. What's up? We will fight. I don't play like that over no goddamn salad. I don't play like that over no motherfucking salad. You got me fucked up. But she threw the whole fucking salad out of her goddamn hand. And they was finna fight over some motherfucking salad. But eventually, you know, Cole apologized to her. And they made up from that. She was kind of funny. But I was like, goddamn, bitch. But then again, bitch, like, I understood where both of their asses was coming from. But Cole and, and Nikki, who had it been my salad when you got that thing made just right? Oh, 
We'd have been some bitches knocking over motherfucking furniture in there. That bitch would have had me fucked up. I don't goddamn play that shit. So, um, back at the restaurant, Nikki gets flowers delivered from her. And she's like, oh, I wonder who these is from. She look at them. Of course, they delivered from her little boo thing, Jack. And she instantly gets pissed. And all the girls, Anna and Anika and Drinka, they're like, oh, what the fuck? What are you, like, what are you pissed off for? And I thought that's your, your man, your boo thing. And so she's telling them no, y'all. So she tells them the, the whole story about him, how um she found out on Instagram that this nigga is married and how he's basically trying to uh get back at her ass like no matter what this motherfucking dumb <sighs> anika 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 baby this heifer tells her look here girl you supposed to know how to play your part i don't ever want to be the wife Ooh. No, I don't ever want to be the wife. No, I know, I know how to play my part. You supposed to have him on this days, and then she's supposed to have him on these days. Um, or you could pee on the stick and tell the nigga you pregnant. Nigga, where your mama near mad? Where your people near mad? Girl, you just, you need love. You need love and you need surroundings around you. I don't, I don't know, but girl, I, I just don't, girl. I just don't know. The twins are at a modeling um, gig and um, the agent pulls one of them to the side and um, it's Dominic. Dominic is the one who is serious about his goddamn modeling thing. And he tells him, oh, y'all got to forgive me. It is hotter than a hook in church in him. But um, his agent tells him that he has a modeling gig for him, but the modeling gig is in Germany and it's just for him. They don't want his brother. Po pos um, possibly they see the motherfucking work ethic in your ass and they see that you want to get the fucking shit done and they see your brothers out here on some goddamn bullshit so they don't want to do that but he's torn that's his twin brother so he tells them like look hey me and my brother we a package deal if they want me they gotta have my brother too and so his agent is trying to tell him like look they don't want your brother they just want you and so he tells him like you know look i gotta i, I gotta think about this his agent tells him like look it's a hoe it's money it's a whole lot of motherfucking money. I couldn't imagine being in his position in his position though. Excuse me. A little bit. I couldn't imagine being in his posi position though, having to choose between losing his twin, uh, well, not even losing his twin, just leaving his twin to go and make some goddamn money, doing some modeling shit, which is really what he wants to do anyway, because his twin, he was even saying that like in the last couple episodes, that's really I mean, he does it for fun, but that's really not what he wants to do. He knows that Dominic is more serious about it. Steph is the one that could, you know, he could take it or leave it. So he's going back and forth about it. He tells the dude that, you know, hey, I got to think about it. I'll let you know about it. I don't know. But he's telling him, like, look here. You're going to have to let me know something sooner or later because these people trying to get that money. <laughs> So, um, anyways, Cola is back at the house, at the little staff condo, whatever that they have. And so, she's texting the dude that she met at the party, that little barbecue or whatever that they had, which is the twins' little homeboy. And so, she got her little wig on, which she looked better with them wigs on, girl. Keep them wigs on, because that little, that newborn baby ostrich haircut that you got going on, mm -mm. We don't want no baby ostrich do to do to do baby ostrich do to do to do. We don't want that. We don't want that. They don't. They don't. Mm -mm. We don't want that. So um, she's texting the little dude or whatever, sending him little pictures of her with her little little old wig or whatever on. And of course Nikki comes in and she has the little flowers that um Jack sent to her to the apartment. I mean to the to the job. And so she comes in and she shows him the color code like, mm, where you get them raggedy ass flowers from? Which granted i'm not a rose kind of i mean i get my husband gets me roses a lot which i like but he gets me other flowers too which i prefer you know what i'm saying give me some other kind of flowers though don't give me rose. anyways so she comes in there she's like yeah this is from goddamn jackass you know jackass which is what the fuck he is and he supposed to be coming over here later on tonight and i'm gonna let him know how i feel and so carla's telling her well let me go ahead and get the fuck on up out of here because um Cola was a real bitch. She was like, I'm going to have to let that nigga know how the fuck I feel. So, uh, let me go ahead and get on up out of here. No sooner than they said that, here comes Jack, ring the doorbell. He coming over there to the house. And so, him and Cole, I mean, no, him and Nikki end up sitting down on the couch. And Nikki is telling him, like, look, so my homegirl ended up finding out some information on social media. She was scrolling through Instagram, and she seen that you got a whole nother page dedicated to your wife. And, uh, so what the fuck is really going on? 
This motherfucker gonna have the goddamn nerve to say that I have feelings for you, but I didn't want to mess up anything that you and I had going on. This is what he initially says. I didn't want to mess up anything that you and I had going on, so I didn't say nothing to you about it. Nigga, what? Are you fucking crazy? What? Excuse me, huh? What? What? Are you for real? She's like, nigga, how the fuck are you going to say some shit like that? Like, when were you going to tell me that you have a whole wife? And then why do you have two different pa pa uh, pages set up? Like, you out here living a single life doing this and you doing this. You telling me you got feelings for me. But, but like, what the fuck? So she gives him an ultimatum. She tells him, okay. If you really got feelings for me, then you need to let your wife know and either you're going to leave your wife and me and you're going to be together and we're going to live happily ever after or you're not going to say nothing to your wife and you can get the fuck on. He like, I, I got feelings for you. I care about you, but I'm not leaving my wife for you. Why the fuck you even get in a situation with her like that in the first fucking place? That's why niggas wonder why they wake up dead. Right there. Perfect example. You wonder why you wake up dead. And then she asks him, when were you even going to tell me this? Were you even going to let me know that you were in a whole situation? This motherfucker going to say, yeah, I was going to let you know. Yet, yeah, As a matter of fact, today, today I was going to let you know. No, the fuck you were not. Had she not said a damn thing to you, you wouldn't have said a goddamn thing to her about it. You would have been completely quiet about the shit. And you would have kept on going trying to get in and get the cookies any goddamn way that you feel. That's what the fuck you had intended on doing and that's what the fuck you had planned on doing so she gets pissed off she finds him flowers she throws the whole goddamn face the water everything on his goddamn ass he looking like a big greasy ass goofball 45 cent goddamn sitting there at the table looking crazy she kicks him out or whatever and then he's steady trying to get back in and talk to her that's when cola comes up like a real rock cola like hey motherfucker you can have to get your goddamn ass out like I, you know what i'm saying we can look look through them things but she don't want nothing to do with you you cannot apologize to her no you need to get the fuck on she don't want nothing to do with you it took some convincing because of course he was steady trying to get in but eventually he left from there and i feel bad for nick you know, I was I was proud of Cola in that moment because Cola stepped up for her. At that moment, it wasn't about Cola Sweets and what the fuck she doing and what she fuck she got going on. She was standing up and she was sticking up for somebody else. And I fucks with you for, for that moment, for that reason, Cola, for that moment, for that reason. So um, back at the Pink Tea Cup, LP is having a little, you know, lunch or whatever with Anna. And so he brings the prenup up to her. And so he tells her, he hands the prenup back to her and he tells her, look, first I want to apologize and I want to tell you that I was wrong. I was wrong forever trying to approach you with the prenup in the first place. So he hands it back to her and he tells her to rip it up. Rip it, rip it. So she rips it up or whatever, right? And so she tells him, look, nigga, I was with you when you didn't have shit. So what the fuck makes you think that if something goes down and we're not together, that I'm going to leave you and I'm going to leave you out and dry like that? I'm not going to do that to you. She tells this motherfucker, I'm with you with Vienna down with you from we ain't had nothing but Vienna sausages and pork and beans and ramen noodles and government cheese, nigga. I'm down for you. It is what it is. So ultimately, they decide they're not going to get a prenup they're gonna get married eventually well jury's still out on that one we'll see how that one goes but that was the end of hustling so let me know what you guys thought about it please comment down below again hit that notification button so you'll be up to date when i upload anything else and i will see y'all in the next video peace out what's up y'all do me a favor and share the video please make sure to subscribe to my channel let me know what you think and um hit that notification button so you will be up to date when i upload my latest videos i holla